that you saw is not a man. It is the devil himself. The classic Twilight Zone series featured a collection of heinous individuals and complete scoundrels. The villains of the fifth dimension came in all different sizes, shapes, and creepy forms. Some were eerily close to reality, such as the ex noxie from Death's Head Revisited, or the wannabe Noxie from He's Alive. But there were also supernatural and otherworldly monsters, such as the gremlin who tortured William Shatner, the infamous Anthony Fremont, and of course, the hungry, hungry Canimates. However, you can't talk about the Twilight Zone's catalog of villains without acknowledging the epitome of evil, the devil himself, or herself. But we'll get to that. As you'd expect from the father of lies, each time the devil made an appearance in the Twilight Zone, it was in a completely different form. In total, the devil took four different forms in each episode plagued by the fallen angel. That said, what follows is my list of best to worst Twilight Zone incarnations of the devil. Obviously, I expect disagreement with my number ranking. After all, this is the internet, a place where fighting over nerdy pop culture is mandatory. Let's get started with number four on my list, Thomas Gomez and the episode Escape Clause, Season 1, Episode 6. Although this version of the devil went by a false name, his true identity took all of a few minutes to figure out. <laughs> You're the devil. At your service. Thomas Gomez didn't get very much screen time in this episode, but the character actor did chew up the scenery, in a good way. This take on the devil was charismatic, unrestrained, and blatantly shifty. The story was standard, a deal with the devil goes bad, really bad. Gomez's larger than life take on the character was fitting for an episode that played like a black comedy. Sure, this devil will supply you with eternal health and make you as indestructible as Gary Busey, but at what cost? Thomas Gomez's over the top sinister laugh alone made this performance entertaining as hell. He was like an off the rails demented Santa Claus. <laughs> Number three on my list is Robin Hughes from the fan favorite episode, The Howling Man, season two, episode 41. This incarnation of the devil breaks away from the formula of making a shady deal with the victim's soul up for grabs. Instead, the devil is inspired by old school gothic horror. If that's your thing, then this devil is for you. All the elements are in place, an ominous castle, a weary traveler seeking refuge from a violent storm, monks, and of course, The Howling Man. For many Twilight Zone fans, this is probably the most popular of the four incarnations. In this episode, the devil initially appears as an innocent man, locked away and rotting in a cell. The story he tells is fairly convincing as to why he's imprisoned by the monks. They're mad, Mr. Ellington. All of them. Raving mad. The mystery of this episode centers around who is lying. The howling man, who may be the devil in disguise, or the supposedly insane monks. In the end, all the prisoner wants is to be set free. Naturally, when he's released, or should I say when he suckers the Traveler into setting him free, his true form is revealed. Thus, Satan is unleashed upon the world yet again. Now, this portrayal of the devil nails the traditional personality traits, lies, and deception. It's also a genuinely creepy and ominous portrayal aided entirely by the haunting atmosphere. Although the episode feels dated for my taste, I understand why many prefer this version of the Twilight Zone devil. Number two on my list is Julie Newmar, a.k.a. Catwoman, in the episode of Late I Think of Cliffordville, Season 4, Episode 14. This Twilight Zone's devil set her sights on a wealthy business tycoon, so needless to say, the sins of pride, vanity, and greed were prominent in this tale. Newmar's devilish methods are both unique and surprising. She's a bureaucrat who is also creative, two things that typically don't mix. By creative, I mean she literally offers up the option of time travel. The sucker with his soul on the line in this story is a self-centered disaster of a man, William J. Feathersmith. He offers his soul for the chance to start life over and prove that he can work his way back up to the top again. He's a gross character. You literally can't wait to see him fall in his face. Needless to say, his best efforts to outsmart Numar's devil ends ridiculously bad for him. <laughs> you look out of sorts. From Catwoman to the Penguin, number one on my list and my pick for best Twilight Zone devil is Burgess Meredith. 
He played the father of lies in the episode Printer's Devil, season four, episode nine. After all, what good is the soul anyway? It's sort of like an appendix these days, particularly since it doesn't exist in the first place. Well, just for the sake of argument, why do you particularly want mine? Well, for the sake of argument, let's say I'm something of a connoisseur, and you have a very choice soul, and as the vintners say, it's a good year. This episode was about a down-and-out newspaper editor, Douglas Winter. The man is basically bankrupt and near suicidal. He ends up unknowingly selling his soul to the devil to save his struggling small-town newspaper. The devil in this episode takes yet another interesting form. He goes by the name of Mr. Smith, a kindly old newspaper man who just wants to help. Mr. Smith agrees to pay off Winter's debts so he can keep his newspaper afloat. He even offers to replace the linotype operator and work as the sole newspaper reporter. Naturally, Doug agrees, but he ends up getting way more than he bargains for. How many times do we need to see people make the same mistake? Deals with the devil never work out. On the surface, this episode is fairly straightforward, but Meredith gets a lot of mileage out of this classic horror premise. Chomping away on his twisted cigar like a boss, Burgess Meredith must have had a blast playing his villainous role. This was his fourth and final appearance on the show, and I'd say he went out on a high note. He portrays the devil in disguise with enthusiasm, energy, and style. You practically root for him to take as many souls as he wants. I should mention, number one and two on my list had an unfair advantage. Both incarnations of the devil were from season four, meaning Julie Newmar and Burgess Meredith had one-hour episodes to flesh out their roles and really shine. This stands in contrast to the shorter half-hour runtime in Howling Man and Escape Clause, but hey, considering the subject matter here, why should we expect this list to be fair? What's the matter? Matter? Why did you quit? Finished. That's impossible. See for yourself. 